go ahead and call this meeting to order. This is a regular board meeting of the Silver Consolidated School District. It is November 21st, 2017. It is 6.03 p.m. And um, welcome members of the board, welcome members of administration and the public. Uh, Ms. Hernandez, could you conduct a roll call, please? Yeah. Mr. McMillan? Here. Mrs. Montenegro? Here. Mr. Clark? Here. Uh, first, if you all join me in the standing and uh, the Pledge of Allegiance and the New Mexico flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. <coughs> indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I salute the flag of the state of New Mexico, the Zia symbol of perfect friendship among the United cultures. Very well. First on our agenda this evening is review and approval of minutes, and we have the October 17th 2017 work session and the October 17 regular uh, meeting minutes. Those were both in your packet to review. And I believe Ms. Hernandez has a correction on the regular meeting minutes. And that was under uh, information and presentations, correct? Mm -hmm. It should be uh, Jeannie mm -hmm. Coleman. Jenny Coleman instead of Jeannie. And so that'll be one uh, one correction that, that uh, she's already made on the, the minutes of the regular meeting. Um, but it was incorrect in our in our packet. Any other uh, concerns on the or edits in the minutes? entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the work session and the regular meeting of October 17th, 2017 with the um, edit to uh, Ms. Coleman's name under information and presentations in the regular uh, meeting. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve the minutes of the October 17th, 2017 work session and regular meeting. Thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Got a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, uh, some minutes are approved. Next on our agenda is consideration and approval of the agenda. Any comments, concerns on our uh, regular meeting agenda? I'll entertain a motion to approve as presented. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve the uh, approve the approval of the board agenda. Got a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, uh, that passes. Next on our agenda this evening is information presentations, which are non-action items uh, to the board. And first up is the SCEA. Good evening, welcome. Good evening, hope you guys are ready for a quick Thanksgiving. It always seems the holidays come and go so quickly, you know. 
Uh, well, of course, thank you um, for always having us here and letting us give an update about the goings on in the district. I thought that the meeting was going to be in Cliff today, so I had to call Samantha because I was almost certain that they have like the November meeting was in Cliff because I remember last year deer hit my car, and so oh, Mr. McMillan pulled the, the bumper off my Jeep and everything. But I so I called Sam and she said it was here because I was like a little bit confused, but it's good to be here regardless of where the meeting is. So. To move on, um, a few weeks ago we received an okay from Mr. Brown to send out emails um, asking for volunteers from the district, regardless of their membership status with SCEA, um, to start talking about and begin our quest to renew um, discussion about a four-day calendar um, that would hopefully start at the 2018-19 school year. And contrary and despite the rumors that are circulating, um, we are going to proceed knowing that we will have put forth our best efforts in finding the appropriate data and information that you, our school board members, and the two new seats um, are looking for. And we would uh, want you and any of the future school board members to be able to make a thoughtful, deliberate, and appropriate decision based on the information presented. Also, I do need to say that in my years as a member of SEA and as the president of this organization, we have not had as many workers' rights issues as we have had in this semester. It's not bad everywhere, but when we have teachers and staff who feel they're being chastised for asking questions or speaking out, staff members who feel the best option is to keep their heads down and not disturb the waters, one has to wonder if there's not a bigger issue or issues that we are not acknowledging. We know that it can be stressful for everyone, especially when evaluations seem to be ever-changing, when there seems to be a lack of communication, when employees arrive before and leave after their contract day, when the chain of command is broken, when it seems as though our only focus is teaching to the test, and when the work environment becomes one that is no longer enjoyable. We have to ask, where is this stemming from? Our goal at SCEA is to ensure that employees are heard, that their voices are not silenced, and that the integrity of the CBA as it is written now is not violated. As a district community, we are constantly working to help each other. I see it at my school site. I hear it from others that, you know, constantly that teamwork effort is happening. And that's good to see despite all of, you know, what seems to be a bombardment of negative energy. I know that we can work together to fix it and hopefully and maybe this little break over this Thanksgiving holiday will be what we need as a district, as work sites to come back and finish the last few weeks of this winter or fall semester uh, positively and productively. So um, we look forward to the special meetings and hearing from our community members who are going to apply for the open seats. And we look forward to seeing you know, what shape the school board is going to take and how we can all work together to move our district always positively forward. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would I would like to ask questions. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask questions. I think if you want to address a question or a concern, yes, you or myself can. I appreciate that. Yes. I do have a question, yes, actually sir. a concern. Okay. Some of the issues that you have just raised mm -hmm. have not been brought forward to administration, to my understanding, and therefore, in the spirit of communication, working together, as you were talking about teamwork, mm -hmm. it would be nice if, before you came in a public session like this, you came to administration and said, here's some concerns, here's some issues. Can we talk about them, work on them, whatever the we, case might be? We have done that in the past. It's unfortunate that, yes, it had to be brought up in public session. So we can work and I'll email and we can schedule um, something um, to talk about some of these things that have come up. We will, you know, again, work to keep those lines of communication open, and that is something that has faltered in the last few weeks or months. 
So that's something that, you know, I know I need to work on and other, you know, admins also, you know, it's just, like I said, it's just a breakdown of the communication. So. Yes, clearly it is. And so I would like uh, to request that. Okay. Absolutely. Because we're right. more than yeah. wanting to meet. Because we haven't had our, you know, monthly or bi month or bi weekly meeting that we used to have. It's just things have gotten a little busy around here for all of us. So. Yes. And just because I'm sure that, that members of the SEEA would appreciate that, um, that respect as well. Mm -hmm. So that's all we're asking for. Sure. Thank you. We can do that, yes. Any other questions? No. no. Good. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Stevens. Awesome. Have a good Thanksgiving. Thank you. You too. You too. Next on our agenda under information, to the board, uh, Mr. Ward. Mr. President, members of the board, and of course, Mr. Brown. Uh, I'm coming here tonight, and I have really no real set idea. <laughs> I have a generalized idea of what I'm supposed to do because it said update, and I'm sitting there going, well, there is no real update on where the CMAR stands because we, we uh, Mr. Brown has said he needed to think about things, and there's really been no decision on how we're going to procure anything for our, our contracting stuff. But he did want me to share a little bit of ideas about what my thoughts are um, from my perspective about the, pot, the pros and cons of when one might do something like this and why it would make sense. Okay? Uh, I think the most important thing, if I can get it across, is to pay as little attention to the semantics of the title of the procurement style and understand that you're basically, regardless of how you're procuring this or what you want, what system you want to go by, you're looking at hiring a general contractor to perform construction services for the district in both cases that we're talking about right now. Uh, up until about five years ago, give or take, I'm not sure exactly when, uh, K through 12 public education did not do any general contracting or contract service procurement other than through competitive bidding, which is basically low bid gets all. Or, you know, and that's it, as long as it's within uh, what's called the maximum allowable construction cost, which is a fancy way of saying the district's budget for doing the project. And, and if you were within that realm and, and you met the criteria and you were a qualified bidder, the low bidder got the, got the project. And, and that's worked, you know, fine. Now there are advantages to that and there are disadvantages to that. It, it's a system that works really well, in my experience, in smaller construction projects, meaning if, when I'm talking smaller, I'm thinking more on the line of less than a million dollars that are in a more finite definition, say something like uh, removing and replacing the daycare center would be a perfect candidate, I think, for something like that. It's a smaller project, it's in, it's in a smaller space, it's following basic <coughs> general construction procedure and process. There aren't a lot of moving parts, and it's not spread out over a lot of space, and it's uh, it's less complicated in that respect. Now, on, on uh, an RFP for a construction manager at risk, the name can be confusing because you're still looking at just hiring a general contractor. It's all on how that person is hired and what kind of flexibility and transparency and control you have over the entire project through that procurement vehicle. Um, if you, uh, one of the things that's really, I, do, I find is a difficulty with uh, competitive bidding is that the lowest price isn't necessarily the best because there are always going to be change orders. The larger the project, the larger the change order percentage usually grows because there's more room for things to expand. Another thing that's really difficult on a management level and a control level that the district, that I don't like in, in the district position, is that 
once you hire the general contractor, all the rest of the contractors, the subcontractors, et cetera, and so forth, are really out of the district's control. You really don't have any say in who those contractors are. They're whoever the general contractor decides to hire. So you have a very limited amount of control over who's on the project and, and things of that nature. And, and you, the number is the number. You don't get to negotiate that number. The only changes in the contractor through the change orders. And with, with a, a CMAR type procurement, the thing that I find most fascinating and advantageous in certain circumstances is that it is not limited to the low bid, although it can be the low bid because it is a qualifications-based bid. And we define what those qualifications are when we request the proposal for people who are interested in doing the project that we want to have done. <coughs> Things like financials, bondability, experience, uh, uh, references, you know, a body of work that they've accomplished, verifiable references, uh, and an entire slew of how they put project costs together and with percentages. So say, like, what is their market going to be for, how are they going to calculate contingencies? How are they going to calculate uh, a, pro, a subcontractor's cost and the contractor's markup, which is a fair deal? What is their markup going to be? You know, all the pieces that go into putting together a total construction cost, you know what those numbers are. And all of those numbers are negotiable. So the first step would then be, you know, you select this person and you have all this stuff that goes into putting the numbers together. So here's probably where the manager, management name came into play is <coughs> that the general contractor you select would then go out and solicit bids from a multitude of subcontractors, multitude of vendors for equipment and things of that nature. And then you, he brings all that information in, you're able to sit down with those people or with those numbers and that contractor and the design people and you can discuss it. It's all right out there and open. And you can pick and choose who it is you want. And all those things, those selections you're making get plugged into the numbers in the contract and you basically are building what the construction cost will be. So you have more control over those aspects of it, <coughs> all towards the goal of controlling what your construction cost is. Another great thing I think about that process is, is when you start looking at bigger process projects, since tax has left or has, has closed up shop, there really isn't a large contractor here that, is, that has the capacity to do some of the larger projects that we've been discussing doing uh, with the bond projects. Um, which eliminates a lot of the possibility of our local people getting involved in those particular projects. Mm -hmm. Whereas in this process, you would be able to then say, we have these contractors we'd like included in the, in the bid process, these contractors that are all local people, and they've got as much shot to get into it as anybody else. And it's all gone through a fair and open communication and making those decisions. So I think it helps to keep local businesses involved, which also then turns around and helps keep local money in the locale, in, in the city. So I think that's a net positive. Um, when you look at, I was interested in finding out how the total costs ended up being working out on an average, just say dollar for dollar size projects comparable. To, uh, what's the big difference? Is there a big difference between one versus the other? And it kind of ranges. The smaller projects, it sort of equalizes out. The bigger the project gets, the difference becomes much larger. And, and I got those numbers um, because PSFA has been accumulating that data, comparing projects, contract types, da 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 all the time since they started using this for public schools. And what they told me they found is on larger projects, let's just say $10 million, for instance, just as a number we can work with and it's easy to play with. Um, on a competitive bid for a project that they expect to cost somewhere around $10 million, by the time they get done with change orders, et cetera, the final construction cost has changed from $10 million to 11. It's a 10% increase. Same size project when they use, have used CMARS in the past, the average cost ends up going down 10%. <laughs> 
So it's nine instead of 10, it's nine. So there's a 20% spread in costs on larger projects. Now, can you expect that kind of thing all the time? I don't think so. I think those numbers will change and range. But what it tells me and, I, and what I think they're looking at, how they look at it and what I take out of that is, is that the larger, more complicated projects, I think are more suited to the districts, to prudent use of district capital and to outcomes, uh, to use the one type, one procurement system versus the other. Something like Harrison Schmidt that has a lot of different pieces all over the entire campus, which will extend into the school year with a lot of complicated logistics so that nothing happens here, I think would be better suited for an RFP to a construction manager at risk. Will the district decide to do that or the administration? I don't know. But I think there's a positive, there's a, there's a positive to that that I think warrants consideration. Either way will work. It's just do these positives outweigh these positives. And that's a decision that somebody's going to have to make at some point in time. Um, on another thing, something that I've been playing with here for the past week, it, that I'm pretty excited about actually, is um, for the first time in the 12 and a half years I've been here, the district's actually had money to do construction projects, and PNM has incentives. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and incentives that actually we, we can take advantage of if we so choose, um, that are actually, I think, pretty good. We're, some of the things that we've talked about doing with bond money are, are finishing up our mechanical equipment replacements, and they have decent incentives for those replacements. So, whatever our costs are, we'll get money back from PM just for doing the work. Okay, so, that will minimize some costs a little bit. Um, the more exciting one for me, though, is uh, the possibility of converting the district over to LED lighting versus the fluorescence and incandescent lights that we do have. Um, they have a couple of programs that we can take advantage of. The one um, that covers the majority of the district, district is called the Quick Start Program. And that's for any facility that is using 200 kW or less. And we just started, the, I met with the PM electrical engineer uh, at Las Cruces last Wednesday, I believe, Thursday. And we started going over the scenario. He started crunching numbers, and I got the first uh, preliminary results back. And it looks like every campus, we are location in the district, with the exception of the high school, possibly Cliff, undecided yet, fits into that category. Now, the nice thing about that one is, is they will pick up 40% of the cost of doing it right off the bat. And the high school they, is done a little differently. It's done by uh, giving you X amount of dollars per kilowatt reduction in power. Basically penciling that out, uh, he and I, that afternoon, it came to be about $30,000 in, in just rebates to do the work. The preliminary estimates I'm getting on for cost savings to the electric utility are perhaps the best thing for the district, and that's somewhere in, in the neighborhood of a third or around a hundred, hundred plus thousand dollars per year annually out of our operational budget, and that's ongoing. So um, we're sort of following through to find out what real numbers are as far as our savings go, what the whole thing will cost, so that we can kind of take a look at that and decide whether that's something we might want to take advantage of. But it seems almost like a no-brainer, as long as it doesn't cost 10 times our, the money that we have, <laughs> or something. But that's kind of all I really could think of to, to come up and kind of share with you all this evening. And I hope that answered some questions that may have been in some of your minds. And if not, roll them at me, and I'll do the best I can to. Well, I just wanted to clarify. Um, obviously, we want to approve a CMAR to hopefully do economies of scale and, you know, be able to budget ourselves out. And then you mentioned that you think it, a different way would be the RFP, RFP process would be better at Harrison. That, we can't do both, you know, right? We have to the, choose? It, the, procurement, the procurement title is an RFP or a request for proposal okay. for a construction manager at risk, CMAR. Okay. So the RFP and the CMAR are basically I'm talking about the same thing. Okay. Okay. 
And and you, what did you think would be better at Harrison though? Not a CMR, is that correct? If Harrison is, we're in, we're in a good place right now. We're moving real forward with the designs and stuff. Um, we're waiting on civil engineering and things to sort of finalize some of the uh, structural engineering for foundations and whatnot, and uh, grading and drainage for outside work with the additional paving and, and that type of thing. That's the phase we're at now. Once that's in, we should be able to finish that stuff up and hopefully be able to go out to solicit contractor, you know, someone to do this. Uh, I'm hoping by the end of January, which gives us a nice long lead time to put all kinds of plans and work through some of the details and difficulties and stuff ahead of time. Um, now that I've taken up my time bloviating, I forgot what your question was. <laughs> I thought the recommendation was that you would see would work best out there oh, was not a CMAR. Yeah. I think out there, if, it's, if the project stays laid out the way it is and the administration doesn't decide to change it into something else for budgetary concerns or whatever may come out, if we follow through with it that way, I think doing, with, doing it in a CMAR fashion would be the most advantageous means of doing it. Okay. That's, just, that's the clarification. We could do it with... We could do it with the high school, but I don't see that there's as much, or the daycare, but I don't see it as being as much of an advantage. So we can pick and choose, is that well, what you're it, saying? It, it kind of depends upon the project, how big it is, how complicated, versus how small and more manageable it is. And we can do both? You can do both. Okay. I, there's also the possibility that when you go through the RFP so that you don't have to go through it multiple times, you can do an RFP and create your base master agreement, sort of like what we did with the architect. And if things work out well with the first one they're working on, because these are going to be multi-year deals, you could all you could then turn around and extend it into the next project. But you could do any combination of this stuff. Okay. And it's all kind of up to you know, administration's discretion and, and what seems like it will be the most reasonable and expedient and cost effective for okay. us. Great, thank you. I, I like that you came up with the idea of um, the, the LED lighting. Um, I was working. just reading about it in yeah, Arizona and doing some yeah, monumental that's... rebates and stuff through their utility companies. So I just decided, well, one more time I'll try p and and they surprised me. And that, that should save the district some money going to LED. Um, that, that, that's a brilliant idea. Well, so wait, look at that. $100,000 is that's two teachers' salary. Mm -hmm. that, that's, I commend you for, for thinking of that. Thank you. And um, always, you know, I, I've, I've had some constituents within the district uh, also just say, you know, they to, to, to remind, you know, the, the administration just to, to stay local, which I know, like you said, it, it, that's hard to control within the contractor, um, but just, just to throw it out, when, when you do talk to them to, to stay local, sometimes we can't help, to, you have to go out to outside sources for the contractor, but um, they say, well, we voted for the bond, we want to make sure, you know, that we get a piece of the pie, but I, I know you do your very best on, on doing what you do, and I commend you for it for everything you do, Barry. Thank you. Well, and, I th and I agree, I think it's, it's not only the right thing to do, but all possible, I think it's just a monumentally positive PR of the district. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ward, a couple questions that I have on the, on the CMAR, where, where I was confused with the presentation that gentleman did uh, from the architect firm was, was the, the cost for the CMAR. And uh, he had said, well, there's no additional cost. And I, that's what kind of really threw me off on that presentation was because I, I thought, well, it sounds like we're going to have to hire somebody. There's got to be an additional cost for that. And, and um, so that's where I really got, I think, thrown off on his presentation. And, and uh, it wasn't clear if that, and to me, was that part of the architect services? Was it? something that was completely separate and that that's kind of where I guess my my questions and concerns are is if we do the CMAR method is that something that's a defined cost say it's you know one percent of the project or is that 
set up front or is there if there's cost savings is that then shared at the end um, and that's kind of where I was or, or most of my questions were regarding the Seymour. The important thing though, like I said at the onset but to remember is is that both processes are to accomplish the exact same thing because what mm -hmm. you're hiring is a general contractor. It's all in what that general contractor does and how more importantly um, it is done with the district. Um, whether you go with, whether you did it through competitive bid or through the CMAR process, there will always be markup. This contractor makes a profit. The larger the project, the smaller the markup. Typically, let's just use the $10 million example, I would expect, you know, five to seven percent is what I would think would be typical for the general contractor on a competitive bid. On a CMAR, you can get a less than that because all those numbers are negotiable because you get that in the RFP. There are markups for contingencies. You don't, you don't end up with as many change orders because you've kind of looked at and decided this is what it is. And when you write the contract or the PO for, for a construction manager at risk, it is basically a contract that I'll do it with this as a, to, for my base bid cost plus anything else. They're basically saying, I will build this project as you have it defined here for this amount of money, period. Now they have something in there, uh, and the way they deal with that is what through what's called a contingency. We'll figure there's going to be 8% contingency for the unknown stuff that comes up. But in the contract, you turn around and say anything is not in the contract or not used up in the project, district gets the money back. You don't get it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen in, <laughs> in competitive bids. Right. You know, so. And, and, and in, in the data that PSFA is coming up with, the average is they come in even with that defined cost of what, the, of what they will build the project at, their defined costs are coming in less than what your allowable cost is. On larger projects, mm -hmm. understand, you know, the smaller they get, like say the daycare, they might be pretty equal. So mm -hmm. your benefit may not be cost benefit may not be worth going through the extra time and effort to, to do something like that. And, and your thought would be to have an RFP for that CMAR? Um, it, for something like like Harrison, I think, it, I think it's a good advantage for mm -hmm. us. Um, you could if you didn't, like the reason I like putting the other project out to bid on a competitive bid scenario is, is pretty much the same reason because you could actually roll that into the CMAR for next summer and it could be done by the same general contractor. You know, you mm -hmm. have that flexibility. However, it also falls into a small enough project that there are local contractors that can do something that size because we're thinking somewhere in the five to $600,000 range. There are people here that are qualified and capable of doing stuff like that and I've already talked to at least a couple of them and I know that have expressed interest. So, why not give the local people the opportunity is kind of the way I was thinking. Sounds good. And, um, and that, that was my question, was the cost was, how is that? But there's not right. an, an additional like service for this. And I think mm -hmm. part of that's the confusion of construction manager mm -hmm. rather than general contractor, general contractor kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Because you think you're actually hiring something additional and you're really not. You're just hiring a different process, right? If that makes that any clearer, mm -hmm. more so than mud, I hope. Mm -hmm. And then, in, in regards to the LED lighting, I think that is a, a, a great opportunity uh, for the district, uh, or a great project for the district to look at. Um, I know Western. I think maybe two years ago, redid all their exterior lighting LED. And so that might be a, a resource to see. I'm not sure if they did P&M um, programs or not, or if they went through uh, USDA has some grants as well. But uh, it might be a resource for as you move forward as well. Thank you. Any other questions?
Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, next on our agenda agenda is Mr. Minus Silver High and an update on the senior trip. Sorry about my appearance. I had to hurry and get out of wrestling practice. And I apologize if I'm looking at you kind of weird. One of my kids thought it was awesome to give me a good cross face before I came to board meeting. So I'm like, okay. Um, so um, the reason I'm coming before you tonight um, is to discuss what changes have been made to the contract. Uh, after getting the email from the lawyer um, that had been submitted to him, there were two things that we had changed. The first one is under the parent guardian. Uh, we admitted some things and the lawyer felt that it was best to uh, change it to as follows. Uh, number three, a student will be subjected to discipline up to and including suspension, expulsion in accordance with the district's student disciplinary matrix and the New Mexico law up to and including suspension or expulsion. And then the next thing that had been omitted was that they wouldn't, uh, students would not be underneath uh, silver care, so we admitted that. Uh, so under section one, under the parent guardian, it now reads as follows. If a violation occurs, local authorities will be contacted. Parents slash guardians will have to make arrangements with the authorities to go pick up your child. And the last and final thing, I did it backwards, but underneath the hello parents and guardians. Uh, section three was changed and modified to as follows. A student must not exceed the seven unexcused absences for the second uh, and third nine weeks. So the reason why we had put it for second and third nine weeks, because the students now are within the second and third nine weeks, we can't um, go after the kids for the first nine weeks since we they didn't have the contract then. Um, the last thing on the second page, I went ahead and modified it and took out the park hopper just because it simplified things a lot, especially for costs. Uh, these have been handed out to the parents. Uh, the cost to participate on the trip is $350. Uh, the minimum num number needed to attend the field trip is 80 students. The maximum number allowed is 100 students, as we had discussed before. The projected date to travel is March 27th through the 29th of 2018. So uh, nothing else had really changed on the second page. So, are there any questions at all pertaining to this? How close are you to 80? We, right now, as of today, we're at 64 students, so that have signed up. Um, there were some seniors I talked to, they had the misconception that they had to have the $350 right now before they could sign up. So we're gonna hold another meeting and put it on the Facebook page to let students know that you do not need to have that right now. Just put your name on there, just to secure your spot. And uh, one of the students is already deciding to choose what bus seat he wants. He brought me a, a map of the buses, and he goes, I want this seat. And I was like, well, you're gonna hold it ahead of yourself, yeah. And so, uh, any other questions? And so. No, sir. Right. Just thank you for taking the time again to, to putting this together for the students, you and, and Mrs. McMillan. Uh, it be a, a well, pleasant experience for um, our senior class, and be worthwhile. So I want to thank you for, for, for doing, committing yourself, yourselves, and, and doing this. Oh, absolutely. And uh, Mrs. McMillan is, is an awesome individual with helping with this. Um, you know, again, this is this is for the kids. Um, I really, really want to make it a memorable one. But at the same time, as you guys can see in the first page, safe. Uh, we don't want any shenanigans, and that's one of my favorite words in my vocabulary is shenanigans. And so, 
really, really want to avoid that. Um, these have been passed out to the parents. They have been, some of them returned back. If at any time the board has any questions or if you come up with any questions, please go ahead and give me a call or you can email me um, and I'll be happy to uh, go ahead and update you. If you would like any of the bed, uh, board members or anyone in, the attend or in attendance, you can go to our Facebook page to follow how things are progressing. It's uh, underneath SHS Fighting Colts Class of 2018. You'd be super surprised. We had to make it really long because uh, a lot of other schools that are acronyms SHS decided to take everything. So there were a bunch of uh, a bunch of other schools, so we had to make it super long. But we welcome anyone to go ahead and go on to there, follow along, and uh, see how things are progressing. So, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. At all. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thank you. Pretty well, next on our agenda this evening is uh, three superintendent. Mr. Brown. Mr. President, members of the board, community members. There's a scheduled in service for January 8th and January 9th, 2018, when we return from the winter break. And Cliff and OHS, Opportunity High School, are currently scheduled with the current calendar to have students on the 9th. They are off on the 8th, but on the 9th. We are trying to provide professional development district-wide for every staff member throughout the district. And in order to uh, be able to move forward as one district and everybody receive the exact same professional development, we have asked the principals and staff at each location, Cliff and OHS, to uh, reschedule January 9th so that the staff will be able to participate in the professional development activities. That would prevent us from having to hire the same company, which is Solution Tree, to come out again at some other point in time, um, incurring additional costs to the district. And so Cliff is, they are over on their hours, and so that should not be an issue. And Opportunity High School is going to change that the Friday of that same week in exchange for that Tuesday. So that should not be an issue. And then the early dismissal for Thanksgiving and Christmas break. We are looking at, it's my understanding that in the past the district has closed the, the office as well as central office that is as well as all 260 day employees um, at half day for the Thanksgiving for the Wednesday before Thanksgiving in other words tomorrow half day as well as the 21st of December if I recall correctly so Thursday. Yeah. the 21st oh. and notices will be going out to the to the paper and Posted on the building as well. Is it the Friday? It's Thursday. the Thursday. Thursday. Oh, that is the 21st. Thank you. And then item C, as in Charles, school and district handbooks will be presented to the school board at an upcoming time, probably during the summer Great. after updates are in place. Great. And that would be for the following school year? That's correct. Okay. Yes, sir. Any questions from the board, Mr. Brown? Um, I, I expressed this day when he called me about the early dismissal. I just want to get those in the contracts for next year so it's very clear. I know you're new, we're new, we all don't know what just the norm is, but um, I think we should just spell it out so that's very transparent and everyone knows. I definitely agree. And uh, so definitely for those half days and then um, the, the, cliff, the cliff one too, we'll just get it in there. Well, that Sounds good. We'll definitely do that in the future. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Brown. You bet. Um, Ms. Milam, um, you're next on our agenda. Do you have any information for the board? Um, Mr. President, members of the board, I apologize tonight for not giving you a, a hand, I mean, a typed up enrollment. We've been so busy with 
professional development for the principals this whole last month and then with getting Illuminate, which is our new testing started, it's kind of consumed a lot of my time. But um, we, are da we are only down one student. Our current enrollment is 2,581, which is down just one student from October 11th. So this is the smallest decrease we've had in a long time, so we were pretty, pretty pumped about that. So um, the other thing is we're finding, just wanted to tell you about Illuminate. Um, we, we're finding that it, te it tests Common Core standards. And our curriculum, the order, the pacing that we use in our, our different schools is not following the Illuminate, which is nationwide. And so we're learn, you know, we're finding that we're going to have to adjust some of our teaching and the chronological order of certain things. And um, that's going to take a little bit of, of working with the teachers um, because they're, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to break what you've been doing for several years. So we're working on that with them with through our coaches and our coordinators and um, but they so far it's been very positive about how easy the test has been to access uh, much easier than discovery was. They love the reports. We had a, a training with the principals and test coordinators last week and they were they just loved it. So there's a lot of good positive things about Illuminate that uh, this is going to be a learning year for us to to have better use it in our classrooms, but we're looking forward to it. So you might hear some comments from teachers and all about it. So, and that's all I have. Questions from the board? Thank so will I do? I'm sorry. So will we not be ready for the test because of the way we are structured this year? But then hopefully next year. It's a little bit different pace than what it was before, but it's still, the, the bottom line is, is you have to be ready for the park. And that's what this is geared towards. It's, it's, it's uh, targeting the areas and how they test the kids. And it's not teaching to the test. It's you're, you're putting the order in a better sequence and they feel there's the flow to it for ch for kids to be able to learn easier. So that's the purpose of it. Cool. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Next on our agenda is Ms. McCain. Um, yes, I was, we, um, the auditors were in Stone McGee and uh, they completed their audit. They left us on um, a week ago Friday and they had to have our audit into the state auditor by November the 15th, which I understand they met their deadline. Um, we are not allowed to release any information from the audit or the results of the audit until the state auditor has released the audit. And so we are just waiting for that final approval from them, which should come probably usually late December, early January. Great. Any other questions or comments from the board? Thank you, Ms. McCain. Next on our agenda is a Board of Education, and first up is the Finance Subcommittee. Yes, Mr. President, member of the Board Community. I met yesterday um, with Mrs. McCain as well as um, Mrs. Alvarez, and we went over um, the transactions from the prior reporting month. We now sit at a 6.14% um, balance. So that, that means that of our whole budget, we still have 6.14 retained for the future. Um, and some things that I just tried to say um, how to kind of explain this, you'll see at this same time last year, we were at 6.99%, which means about 1.6 million. And something that's changed from last year to this year that I just kind of reflected on, because they're still very close numbers, but sometimes people want to know the reasons for the differences. Um, this time last year, we had a superintendent that was temporary, and so he was taking a reduced salary. We also had um, a lot of retirements mid-year, and so that affected 
that you know positively affected our our numbers for last year but the number that we're sitting at right now is obviously what the state likes us to have um, actually more than it's 1.4 million and again keep in mind our budget is reduced by a million dollars from last year so last year we had a 24 million dollar budget this year we're operating on a 23 million dollar budget and um, we've still been able to keep staffing lower uh, to the tune of almost a million dollars, like $925,000 is what we're spending less. Um, so it, uh, I think we're sitting at a really good place. I think um, hiring and those sort of different things are kind of settling down. The positions are getting filled. There is some turnover in some of our less uh, full-time positions, cafeteria and stuff like that. But I think that's pretty normal. So I think um, we have, the dust has kind of settled. <laughs> so um, we should be able to compare more apples to apples. That's all I have. Thank you. A, a question that, that I have uh, on, I guess maybe a specific question on the, on the budget is, what do, how, do we, how are we looking on our substitutes? Because that's been, a, I think, a, an expense <coughs> in the past. Um, that's been rather high and, and where are we this year on that is well actually we're probably going to be at the same point as we are we're, we're last year simply because we have done so much more professional development and it's pulled some of the teachers out of the classroom in order to go to these different trainings and so we've had to of course fill those positions with substitutes so you know we're not seeing a big decrease in that but we're seeing it for a good reason you know they're they're allowing the, the teachers to have the opportunity to go to these professional developments so that hopefully it'll help their jobs a little, um, make their jobs a little easier. Okay, thank you. Next on our agenda is uh, board president. And um, first, uh, I'd like to say, um, it was after our last meeting, uh, Ms. Vasquez had uh, submitted her letter of resignation and and it was really kind of a, a shock to me and a surprise. And um, uh, but that that was uh, certainly her decision. And and I want to uh, thank her for her her years of service on the board and her her work that she put forth as a board member. And uh, so I just want to um, uh, publicly thank her for for serving on the board. And I enjoyed working with her on the board and uh, we'll miss her here, but uh, um, so that's, that's uh, the first thing that I wanted to address. Um, secondly, um, I want to, uh, we're, we're at the end of uh, the, the school week and wanted to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving the uh, remainder of the week, and uh, if you're traveling, I hope you uh, travel safely. That's all my comments, uh, Ms. Montenegro. I would echo that of uh, Mr. McMillan about Francis um, and just thank her for her service, especially under the prior administration. It was not, it was not easy, um, and so there's probably a lot of things that she's had to deal with since. Um, I, I want to wish her well. You know, she just felt like this wasn't um, something that was healthy for her right now, and so I, I I honor her for recognizing when something just isn't working for you and being able to step away. Um, I think there is lots of fear and concern in, within the community about what is going on um, with this board. Um, this board is not making any decisions. This board is following the chain of command. This board um, hired Mr. Brown to do a job, and he has his distinct uh, personal, um, management style, shall we call it. And um, we need to let him do his job until we have a concern um, otherwise. And so I think that's important um, as a board that we support our superintendent as long as he is um, doing the things that we as a board see best for Silver Schools. Um, I just want to reassure people that there are people out there that want to serve on this board with us. Um, that
that want to um, make Silver Schools a better place for their children, for their grandchildren, um, to give back to a school district that gave so much to them. Um, and I know that we're going to be okay. We will find the people to fill the seats and we will move forward in a positive um, fashion to the betterment of Silver Schools. So I just want everybody to re be reassured that all, all is well. Um, it was it was unfortunate that Patrick moved. I'm sorry that Justin moved and could not retain his seat, and as well as Mrs. Vasquez that she felt a need to move on because I feel like her voice. To me, I could just she was just I saw things so much differently than her. But when we communicated, um, I could see her point of view as well, and so I will I'll miss that, and I let her know that. You know, I don't see things the way you see them, and so it's it was very valuable to me. So. We're going to be okay. And happy Thanksgiving and enjoy your break and get some rest. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Kahn? Uh, and I mimic both my, my fellow board members' um, responses on Mrs. Vasquez. Um, it, it was, you know, uh, I enjoyed being on the board with her. Um, I, I, when I did uh, find out, I, I was shocked, however, um, reading her response in the paper made me feel very negative towards us on the board, which I, I, I didn't, um, um, that I disliked. But um, like um, Ashley, Ashley well said, you know, she's on moving on to her, her own endeavors. I wish her well. Um, and I look forward to the next two upcoming school board members that I'm going to be dealing with, or not dealing with, but <laughs> um, working with, uh, having the honor of working with. So um, I, I feel we're pretty strong. Um, I enjoy work. I feel like we, I work with Mike and, and Ashley and, and, and Mr. Brown and Linda. Um, I want to wish everybody a, a happy Thanksgiving and wish all fall activities good luck on their endeavors. Um, I got the opportunity to going to Harrison Schmidt and uh, attending their Veterans Day performance. Um, the effort that this, the teachers and administration there at Harrison Schmidt put forward was outrageous. Uh, it was very heartfelt, a lot of teary eye. Um, I did ask Mr. Potts if he to, to play a video of the students. They did do um, a song where they did, uh, um, they, they sang and they did um, sign language. And what Miss Billings uh, said, you know, short time, they learned it and it was just, out I, I was, it was just phenomenal. I want to just share that with you.
that the purpose of me serving on this board is is for that reason um, i'm very proud to represent the students of this district and i i'm not gonna cry because i'm, I'm so proud <laughs> with these students of the outforth that they come up with their hard work and these teachers it's phenomenal um i, I do want to thank mrs roxanne ogas to letting me share that video um and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. That was a great idea. And I was unable to uh, attend any of the, the Veterans Day's events, so it was a great idea to share that here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next under on our agenda under Board of Education, we have uh, a Cliff FCCLA support for travel expenses. And I think what this uh, relates to is the uh, region meeting that we had out at Cliff. Um, we want to ensure that that, that, pro that program provided the dinner for everybody and we want to make sure that um, uh, they, that all their expenses are covered. So I think we were looking at maybe a figure of $500, I think was what um, we wanted to, uh, uh, to provide to that program for their efforts in providing dinner for our, our region meeting out at, uh, out at Cliff. I think it was very well done and we certainly uh, don't want to put them out for uh, any funds for, for them doing that for us. So any other, any other thoughts on, on that? I think $500 is what would cover that, that expense. That should be sufficient. They worked very hard and they did a very well, uh, they did a very well, uh, excellent job on, on doing the catering and preparing the, the meal for, for our fellow board members and the other Region eight districts and, and us, so it's, I, think, I believe it's very well deserved. Okay, and that would be out of that would be out of the board of education um, funds. Very well. Next on our agenda is limited public comment. Ms. Hernandez, have we had anybody submit any uh, comment forms for comment tonight? Very well, uh, next is um, action items. And first up is our uh, consent agenda. The uh, one budget uh, finance reports through uh, 1A through E and 2A through C. Okay. Um. First of all, we have, um, we're seeking approval for the checks written for the month of October. We um, wrote $2,601,494.12 in um, expenditures for that month, including payroll and everything else. Um, and then under B for our um, budget adjustment requests, we have one that is an actual increase on the budget, and that is we had our initial award of our dual credit instructional materials in the amount of $8,137. Um, the way the PED works is they give us an initial allocation of 85% of the total amount that they're going to give us. If we do expend all this, which we usually do, then they will um, award us the final 15% uh, sometime in February or March. And then... Um, the um, three other budget adjustment requests that we had were for Title I, IDEA B, and um, the Title II teacher training and, and recruiting. And basically, those are all just budget cleanups where you know we've got all of our salaries in and have everybody in, in position and everything. So now we're doing a budget cleanup just to make sure that all of our functions are in alignment and in balance and that we don't have anything that's um, out of compliance with the public ed department. Okay. And then finally on that list in that section is we have um, two donations. Um, we have from Grant County Title Company, $1,000 coming to La Plata Middle School Reading Plus program. And then from the Do Dollar General Literacy Foundation, there is um, a $3,000 grant that was also received to the La Plata um, Middle School for their youth literacy grant. And my understanding is um, Ms. Bustillos runs that program she has I think a better idea of exactly how it works I know that she buys um, online yeah, training for the students um, that $4,000 pays for 50 seats for students 
Um, right now I'm using it with my seventh grade students and Mrs. Cross is using it with her upper level eighth grade students. And it helps students um, with vocabulary acquisition, reading comprehension, there are writing questions that are similar to what is on the park. And um, this is the second year that we've used this program. Last year, around this time, um, we had Eddie from the IT department furiously in there installing servers and wiring everything up and, and getting that all set. And um, the program starts, they have a, a, a pre-assessment where it places them. Um, and we have found that um, typically, Students are reading anywhere from four to five grade levels below where they are supposed to be. And by the end of the program, they have caught up at least two grade levels. So I mean, it, it doesn't sound like a lot in the grand scheme of things, but when you have seventh and eighth graders who are reading, who have tested at a first grade or second grade level, that has to tell us something that, you know, we're, where we are as far as reading comprehension. And that ties in with um, Illuminate. So we're going to see how that data works together. Um, in the next couple weeks before the semester is over, we're going to do a uh, midpoint benchmark assessment to see how our students have grown. And just you know, checking daily or whenever we do use the program, we can see that we have uh, students who are leveling up. So they are moving from that first and second grade level up to you know grade level by grade level they have to pass each um, part of the program with an 80 percent or better and it won't let them advance until we do that and so um, this was the second year that we got the grant and um, over at grant county title i was talking to them about it and they said well how much more do you need and so they donated the thousand dollars that we needed um, so hopefully we can um, see that improvement, work with Illuminate to see where it is that we, you know, our students are lacking, at least for that 50. Ideally, it would be nice if we could get it for our whole school, for the whole district, um, because I used it when I was teaching high school, and you could tell the improvement with the vocabulary and their comprehension there, and we can definitely see it now here at the middle school. So. Awesome. Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Do you pick and choose who gets those 50 seats based on their current reading level? Based on, yeah, well what we were using was Discovery. Mm -hmm. And so um, last year, since it was the first year I had done it, we, we had the thought that we should also do it with the um, upper level students to see what kind of growth that happens with them because last year it was strictly just, you know, our, our lower performance students. We could see the growth, but we also needed to see, you know, in my reflection back on reporting the data to the grant, um, was that we also needed to see what was going on with our upper levels and how we can help them. Because this program goes all the way up to college level with their reading and, and vocabulary and writing and everything. So right now it's just specific based on discovery scores. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. McCain, on that? Uh that is everything. So we've got um, before us an action item, our consent agenda 1A, one total checks, checks written, the three budget adjustment requests, no awards or proposals, the two donations, uh, no conflict of interest disclosures, and none under 2A, B, or no, C. No, I, I did Yes. Oh, Miss, um, I apologize, Miss Milo. That's okay. Um, I have, I gave you a revised copy of the vehicle, the activity vehicle drivers. Um, we, uh, Sandra got several more of them trained. So we're looking at, I believe there's 12 new ones on there. And there's also a feeder route. Um, Carrie Rice needs, is uh, revised and added on there. So those are the, the revisions that we need to have approved tonight that we're asking for approval. Thank you. Now we have our action item consent agenda A. Uh, one, our financial reports, amount checks written, our donation, and then two, 
uh, activity drivers and feeder routes, and I'll entertain a motion. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve action item six, uh, A1, A, B, D, and then two, B and C. With there not being any awards under C and no conflict of interest and no bus drivers. Thank you. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? A second. We've got a second. Any discussion? We'd just like to uh, thank the businesses that um, did donate uh, to the district, uh, Grant County Title and Dollar General. So thank you all for, for those donations. Um, any other discussion? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. Next on our agenda is our individual action items. Under B, consideration and approval of the following policy advisories. These are the policies that we had a first reading on our last meeting. Uh, beginning with uh, policy advisory 128 and going down through policy advisory uh, number 140 and I would uh, I guess for this uh, we had as I mentioned the first reading last month was there any concerns uh, uh, regarding any of these policies uh, from administration? Or no, sir. In their, their form under the first reading? So no concerns, any questions, comments from the board? I would entertain a motion to approve um, these uh, policy advisories 128 through 140 as, I don't know if you would say, with one motion or as a whole? Mr. President, I make a motion uh, to approve um, under the individual action items, B, consideration of the approval of the following policy advisories. Policy advisory number 128 to policy advisory number one through 140. Got a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Got a motion and a second. Any additional discussion? All right, all those uh, in favor of uh, approving uh, action, individual action item B, consideration and approval of the following policy advisories, beginning with policy advisory number 128 through policy advisory 140, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, that motion passes. Next on our agenda under individual action items is C, consideration and approval of a board retreat facilitator, facilitator contract. And with um, the need for us to appoint two additional seats, I will um, make a motion that we table this item until we fill the two vacant seats on our uh, board. I will second that motion. We've got a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor of any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of tabling item C, consideration and approval of a board retreat facilitator contract, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, that motion uh, passes to table. Next under individual action items is a D. Uh, board to consider approval and of school board vacancy announcement qualifications and media plan and this is for uh, Ms. Vasquez's uh, board position basically what I had, had had provided to each of the board members is that same draft that was provided to us previously for Mr. Weck's um, a resignation of his position and so this is the announcement um, and of course it's going to be for Ms. Vasquez. Her district number was three I believe and 
the question before the board is how long do we want to leave this vacancy um, announcement out there how long um, should we accept the letters of interest so the one that's out there now is open till December 1st and we gave them three weeks um, so this could potentially be posted tomorrow is that correct um, it would probably oh I'm sorry no it would be um, because that it would be Monday would be so it would probably be posted Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So that would be the, be the 20, 28th. Let me look at my calendar here. So if we were if we were able to start the uh, announcement on the twenty eighth of November, I think that would would be possible. Mm -hmm. Jim? Mm -hmm. So we could uh, have it uh, be the announcement posted on the 28th. And this last one, we, we did three weeks. We did three weeks um, I would I would say that we close it on the 12th, or if it needs to be a weekend. The 12th would be two weeks. And then that gives us time to schedule the next week. Um, we need to do that like by the 19th or 20th. So if you if you the say the nineteenth is our regular yes. meeting. Nineteenth. Mm -hmm. So close it on the twelfth and do the interviews on the nineteenth. Mm -hmm. And I, and I should look at our calendar. We do have a special meeting already on the sixth of December for Mr. Wick's position to appoint interview and appoint um, on the sixth. So. Well, we wouldn't even be getting him until the 12th, so we could get him sworn in. Well, we're the, for Mr. Wex's position, we would do, we would meet, have a special meeting on the 6th of December. We would appoint that person that, that evening, mm -hmm. most likely. And then um, if you say accept letters of interest for the uh, District 3 position up until the 12th is that what you're that's what I said that would that would be two weeks but if someone thinks that we should end it on a weekend or something I mean we could even close it on the 15th and still interview on the 19th and interview on the 19th yeah. mm -hmm. that sounds reasonable to me mm -hmm. and that's our next uh, so then we would appoint at that next regular meeting mm -hmm. uh, for the vacancy for Ms. Vasquez's vacancy, correct? Yep. And we had until December 25th to get that one done for the 45 days. So that's well within that deadline. So on this on this letter, we would say um, no later. We would change that month to December 15th. 2017 um, with the interview and appointment to take place on the 19th of December. Mm -hmm. Mr. Brown, Ms. Hernandez, any uh, questions on that? It sounds Time very reasonable. My next question is, I don't have a school calendar in front of me, but what does that, are we in school until Would it be the, the 21st? Yes. Uh, the, the last day of school is the 21st or the 20th? 20th. 20th? That's 2016-17, so that's the wrong calendar. Okay. Are you at the wrong So that... 
Oh my, it's the 20, yeah, the 21st they're out. 21st they're out. Okay. So that's that, still, we're still in session. So that's good. That, I think, is a, a fair timeline to allow folks that are interested um, to submit letters and then gives us just a, really a day to, uh, to verify that uh, those folks are residing in that, that district. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So for our action item, our individual action item, thank you, Linda. Um, under D, consideration to board to consider approval of uh, school board vacancy announcement. So we've got the announcement letter for um, district number three. Our um, vacancy will plan to be posted on November 28th. We'll get this posting out with a deadline of the end of business, which is 4.30 on December 15th to uh, submit a letter of interest and uh, confirm that they're eligible. And I, and I, I probably should uh, um, just mention that to be eligible for consideration, uh, you must be a registered voter, you must be 18 years of age, uh, not, a, not be a convicted felon, and physically reside in District 3. So I will uh, entertain a motion to approve uh, action item uh, D, the approval of the school board vacancy announcement, qualifications, and media plan. Mr. President, I make a motion uh, to approve individual action item D, or to consider approval of the board vacancy announcement for District 3. Got With the item D? Or D, sorry. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We've got a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. We've got a second. Any additional discussion on that? I don't think we discussed the media plan, um, but it would just follow what we are doing with District 4 right now, correct? Do the same yes, type of media plan, get it on the Facebook, get it on the website. The website the mm -hmm. And the press, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, and then be po be uh, of course available or posted down here as, yes. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you for that. Uh, um, so we've got a motion and a second to approve. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, that motion passes. And then our last on our individual action items is item E, board to consider establishing a date for school board candidate interviews. And we are looking at our next regular meeting for this district uh, vacancy number three. So we would be looking at our December regular meeting of December 19th. <coughs> Any other comments or discussion on that? <coughs> Depending on the number of, of qualified applicants, um, could be a busy agenda, but I think uh, considering the holiday and all that, it's probably a, a better option than doing a, a special meeting. Right, because our deadline would be the 25th. Mm -hmm. uh, which is Christmas, um, and we're getting it in just before everything kind of closes down. Mm -hmm. and maybe mm -hmm. have a day of wiggle room. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. well, that's a bare best option. Mm -hmm. Okay, very well. Um, so I'll entertain a motion uh, for uh, individual action item E board to establish the date of. December 19th during a regular scheduled meeting to um, conduct the board candidate interviews. 
Mr. President, I make a motion to approve December 19th as the date for school board candidate interviews. Thank you. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I second. Thank you. Uh, any additional discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, that motion passes. Next on our agenda is a future meetings and proposed agenda items. Um, please remember we have that special meeting on December 6th. That will be to interview and potentially appoint um, a board member for Mr. Uh, Wex vacancy, which was District 4, I believe. And um, following that, our, our regular scheduled meeting December 19th with a work session at 5.30. Regular meeting to start at 6. Also, uh, just uh, FYI, the Board Institute um, meeting in February 8th through the 10th is in Santa Fe. The New Mexico School Board Annual Conference is April 7th through 9th in uh, San Antonio. And the 2018 School Law Conference is the uh, June 8th and 9th in Albuquerque. Any other comments or discussion on those meeting dates? Very well, next on our agenda is open public comments. Ms. Hernandez, do you have any, any submission for public comments? Seeing none, we'll move um, to our next item, which is executive session closed pursuant to 10-15-1. H2 through H9, NMSA 1978, um, H2 limited personnel matters, staffing, and H7 attorney client privilege litigation reports. Uh, Mr. Brown, do you have um, information for those items for the board to go into executive session? Yes, sir. Very well, I'll entertain a motion to go into and I believe it's a roll call to go into executive session yes yes Mr. Connor. yes all right and the time is 731.